if you look at the offer letter example, he lists that with receipts. You have you need that cover letter. Then you need the 1099A that goes goes with it. Uh, you need the uh, 1099V that he has produced, which is basically uh, a check or a voucher to, to specify the amount and trigger them off to do something. Right. Uh, you you need the uh, he's he's putting it to a direct express card, so he has. Oh, a, okay. He he has a form in there uh, to for them to direct it to the direct express mm -hmm. card. Then he has uh, the, his package of receipts, and he has the three uh, F fifty six forms he has needs, two F two fifty sixes and one fifty six F, and then his W eight B E N form, declaring your non resident alien status. So it's a pretty hefty package. Okay, so that goes in in addition to the individual banker uh, EIN. Yes. Gotcha. How many, how many packages did you send in? Uh, I sent in about, I guess, about 40 receipts, and I sent in two bills, um, two, two utility bills. Okay, so you send in one package of receipts. Yeah, one package of receipts went in separate from the from the utility bills, correct? Okay. But I sent them only with 1099 filled out, you know, according to the form. But I didn't, I didn't. Um, this this was before the 56s came out. So if they kick them back, then I'll just I'll redo it. No problem. Or you could just uh, add these to them, send it in, and add it to them. Ah, okay. And, and probably it wouldn't hurt to just to uh, reprint in the package what you had already sent to them. But Mark has told me that it's a duplicate of what they already have. True that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I sent it to the certified, so I could just refer them to that certified document, to that certified yeah. mailing. Yeah. Yeah. That you that way you don't have to you, you know they may not they may do it without having to kick it back I got you but got you. on the receipt you said they sent you sent them in uh, uh about a week ago yeah I sent them in actually on Wednesday I mean not the set the invoice for the set offs you sent them in a week ago oh yes That's absolutely okay now i I pay online. So I do have an online account, so I can go in and check the status there. Oh, okay. So you pay your utility bills online, so you could check right. it if it's been cleared. I got you. I got you. Right. Even if even if you're not paying online, you probably can get an easy online account, so you can check this thing. No doubt. Anyone else send in some packages? Are you having any problems pulling this together? <laughs> yeah, it's having... pretty self-explanatory, man. This is the simplest that I've seen. You know, like I was telling Pat the other day, man, I've been chasing my tail for two years, but this is the simplest process that I've seen that people are talking about. Right. Simple, man. Simple. Now, on, on these uh, 56 forms that he has, um, he, he, prepared, he prepared them so that they are PDF forms. And I, I use pdfescape.com to do my form. Do you? Basically, go there, you uh, upload your form, you modify the form, and then you save it. Now, when I did that, I had difficulty filling out the phone, the phone number. 
the way he the way he has set up the, the field characteristics are quite right to edit that with PDF Escape. However, I I have another editor. I think it cost me thirty bucks or something here, PDF editor, and I was able to insert the phone numbers with that editor, so that even though PDF Escape is having a problem with the phone numbers. Um, uh, uh, Adobe, Adobe probably won't have that problem, and there probably won't be that problem on Nitro PDF either. Okay. Again, and those 56 phones were, were very explanatory. It was just that technical problem. Uh, with, with the, the phone numbers. Oh, and the, the first two digits is the estate EIN number. So if, 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 if anything else, you could just you know, go prepare those forms and then you know, by hand white, white it out and numbers incorrectly. So whatever the problem is, you can fix it. Indeed. So it would be good for people to, to want, as they're doing their receipt, do the receipt voucher letter example as a guide for the other documents that you have to prepare and pull all together. <clears throat> now, I would, would imagine that once we do this a couple of times to Puerto Rico, we're not going to have to send in everything because they'll have this stuff on file. Mm, right. I was thinking that as I was filling that out, yeah. And I found over four thousand dollars worth of receipts, man. Yeah, I have a whole bunch. I have about six utility utility bills. And uh yeah, that's there's probably about four thousand there and I may have another five thousand. <laughs> And that's without even going back very far. Yep. Mm. Okay, Tom, I'm on the line. Hi, Patrick. We got the recording going. Okay. Thank you. Well, anybody else got any questions or anything there? Uh, I, I do have a question. Do uh, you have a 56 app up there for the estate EIN? I would imagine the thrust EIN is just changing the data. That's right. All right. Well, and on the... It's like what we were doing before. We need to have, when we're sending those out to Ogden or uh, when we submitted our uh, 1041s, and maybe you had to do it. Uh, one for the, but I redid it, rewrote it a little, using a little different wording and uh, why uh, we had the uh, item now. You you had in uh, part part two of the authority item number. Oh no, I uh, just. I think I'm looking at the wrong form. Oh, yes, down in number 23, part three tax notices. Say this private bank estate has none, and I, I imagine that means that it has no, that is not liable for any taxes. Right. Right. Okay. So that really means this estate is not liable for any taxes because it's a non usury account. Right. Okay, thank you. You don't want to use usury, okay? That's basically what the Pope told him in uh, Washington, D.C. there, to knock okay. off the damn usury. But uh, that's sort of probably hidden away because the bankers and the politicians, they they exist on usury. They're blood suckers. And that's the only way they can exist is to suck 
the blood out of the, uh, the labor of the people by this monetary uh, blood-sucking system they have. It's been in all the vampire movies for years, okay? Uh, looking at this. This goes all the way back to Daniel, to uh, Egypt, you name it, out here. I just love listening to the radio and listening to all these uh, uh, Baptist ministers and all these uh, uh, other ministers that are all over the, the damn radio there trying to explain what the shit the Bible's all about. And they are totally dead wrong. Christ is not a person. Okay? Christ is the law. The law is returning. That's what needs to come about. The law always was and always will be out here. It was the universal law that gave life to Adam. And it's been passed down throughout history that you have to follow the law. The law is the giver. And right now the term for the law is Christ in the Roman Empire. And that stands for cast in iron. The law cast in iron. Resurrection and all this other stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is no rapture and all this other stuff. You follow the law, you will get raptured. No doubt. Wrong. I, it's just mind-boggling that nobody could see this out here. And basically, the Pope, basically, he's trying to lay out the law. Even though he's a Jesuit, okay? Everybody badmouthed the Jesuits. And he, basically, is trying to straighten things out. But basically, the bankers and everything, they're going to blow away. The Jezebel that basically tried to, to destroy that is supposed to cast the stone down and destroy the law once and for all in the church is the Virgin Mary the Jezebel the usury they use symbology but basically everybody's got the damn symbology so damn screwed up it's ridiculous Somebody got something there to say? No, I think that's just somebody having it in the background. I'll mute it out. Oh. <laughs> oh I'll unmute everybody and let them ask any questions they've got. Okay. Everybody's unmuted except that one noise. Patrick, I have a question for you. Yeah. I was working on doing a 1099A. The... Um, TS receipt, I think is the one. And both of the addresses, um, the borrower and the lender, neither one of those are addressed to the the um, tractor supply store. One is addressed to Puerto Rico, and the other is your your home address. Should right. one of them have the? Um... No. Okay. Help me understand. No, it's that. on. It's on the receipts. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. See, we're coming in, going to the Treasury. Okay? That's what this 1099A is all about. Okay. We're going, and we're going to borrow from our Treasury account. The voucher, the 1099B that I put there with the Tractor Supply is saying that the Tractor Supply Company owes the Treasury that amount of money. Now the treasury has to make sure the tractor supply 
returns the funds to the Treasury. That's not our job. We're just right. identifying it, but we're coming in and now saying, we want this much out of our account. You make sure that it gets from the Treasury over to our account. Okay. See, the funds have to come from the tractor supply reimbursement for the uh, rent that they uh, owe, get deposited in the Treasury, then the Treasury, with showing these receipts, has to deposit over into our account. Then from the account, we can borrow it out of there or take out the whole account. Okay, that makes sense. But see, in the process, we're collapsing the national debt in the process. So cool. Then see, that's what uh, you can say everything you want to the politicians. It's the people, the individuals that have to do this. Yes. To close this down. You can wish it all that somebody you got there is going to come and do everything for you. Well, basically, it ain't going to happen. Right. It'll destroy itself before that happens. Only the people that go to get out there and fight for it will get it because they're the ones that are deserving. True. On on that 1099A, um, you have in there um, just EIN in, in the... I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> anyway, it's just it just says E I N. Is that the um company I was EIN? talking about the estate down below, wasn't I? No, this was one underneath the borrower um name. I mean underneath the borrower box. So you have the borrower up on top, then you have um uh social security number with dashes and then right next to that you have E I N. And I believe that EIN is supposed to be the tractor. The estate company. EIN, okay? The estate EIN is the name that's in the next block down. Okay, so it's not the tractor company EIN number. On the 1099A, no. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then that would go on the... It's uh, your EIN. Uh, you're the one that's borrowing it. That's true. Okay, I got it. Yeah, on the ten nineties, <laughs> on the ten, and on the voucher. Okay, I got tractor supply on there, and then I said unknown. Okay, I didn't know their nine digit uh, zip code or their uh, nine digit uh, EIN, so I just said unknown. Right then, find it. They know who in the hell they are, especially yep. from the damn receipts. They can track them down. Yep, the receipt, and they've got the the company name and the address. That's all they need. Yeah, well, they got the store name. Basically, the I gave them the, the home address, the home office. Right. right. Okay, I got it. I understand. Okay, okay. thank you very much. And then basically okay. for bill set off, when you're doing a bill, then you make it out to the... Uh, company that sent you the bill. You're borrowing from them. Oh, and okay. then you're doing the endorsement on the back of the bill. So when you're doing a bill set off, that is entirely different. Oh, okay. That so one I'm doesn't go to Puerto Rico. I'm mixing up the two because I'm actually doing a bill set off for a credit card. So I need to use the difference. Yeah, you do the one that I had for the University of uh, Hospital set off. Okay. The bill okay. set off statement. Okay, I'll do that. I'm glad I asked. Now the, there should be a blank bill set off document there that I posted up there. You'd write the one on the front and then the one on the back. Right. Uh, and then basically, uh, if they've got three days. To uh, get this done, you know, to change the subject just a little bit, you're talking about uh, being Roman citizens. I was doing a little bit of research on uh, the local diocese website, and 
they actually have a physical location um, that the diocese is over. In other words, they have a landmass that they claim for that diocese. And uh, my mom and I were talking about it this afternoon. Since they claim the, claim the land, and the reason that they do claim the land is because of right of first discovery with the Pope that financed, was it Queen Isabella that uh, financed Christopher Columbus? Anyway, he claimed the uh, New World by right of discovery, so then the diocese is the manager of that land area. So, you know, it, in thinking about that, remembering what I researched here quite a while ago, that makes sense with the Roman citizen part. Right. We've been basically, we're under Roman law, okay? And Roman mm-hmm. law is basically, we're, we're an ambassador in Christ, okay? But the empire is basically Rome that is in power, and then it's, uh, Christ is the law that's in the Roman Empire, cast in iron. That's yep. what's right out of the book of Daniel. Now, I was listening to a couple of ministers there today, and basically they were trying to go through Daniel and all this, and uh, they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. I just love it. Now, I'll listen to some of these nitwits out here. Think that they know, and basically, yeah. Uh, Blaming everything on certain things. Oh, it's going to happen this way. It's going to do and done. No, it ain't. It's all in you. You're basically can't, a creation of the law. Your common sense is the real law when you look at it. Right. That's what keeps you ticking, okay? Whether you're sane or insane. Whether you're on track or off track. So it's all about the law, and the law is Christ at the present time. Christ didn't, the word Christ didn't come on the scene until in the Roman Empire. That's true. But see, nobody sees that correlation of what that was all about. Now, what is the first occurrence of the word Christ? Why? It's what is basically it? around Jesus' time. Okay. And that was roughly about 400 years after uh, the Roman Empire started. Yeah, right, okay. Now, the Roman Republic started about 400 years before Christ came on the scene, or before Jesus came on the scene. So, so you're not saying that the Christ the name the term Christ was used before Jesus, or is it just that uh, what they used in Rome to call him? Well, basically, Christ was the last prophet, or Jesus was the last prophet. Okay, and right. that's where the word uh, Christ started appearing. I don't think it was in Malachi uh, that you found uh, Christ. You, if it did, it was referring to the upcoming uh, law system. Hmm. Okay. Now, see, that's what people take a word and they can screw the living shit out of it. So it amounts to Jesus the lawgiver. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you get your rights and everything from? The law. Where do you get your sovereignty? From the law. Not from any individual. Individuals die. But the law is supposed to remain constant. The land can change, but the law doesn't. At least it's not supposed to. But the Jezebel law system does. The her system. Come out of her. Uh, 
And the white pope basically has done a hell of a job of putting uh, the religion out there in a lot of different cases. They're trying to get all the women under their control and basically then get all the men the back into the churches and everything. That's what they brought in the Jezebel system back in the mid-century. Uh, uh, to bring the Virgin Mary as a co-redemptorist into the picture with uh, Jesus. But it wasn't Jesus, it was the law system. It was the codes of law, which was basically what the Virgin Mary was really referring to, a new set of laws. Had to get the women, and basically the women were the easiest to control. Because that could then put them on an equal plateau with the men. When they were supposed to be a co-existence with man. But not to be superior over man. So any woman out there that claims to be a judge ain't a judge. They don't know who they are. Just like a lot of these men don't know who they are, they're operating as a female judge in the Jezebel system. When you look at the Form 56, you need to come in and basically have one there now with your individual banker or with your private bank being the fiduciary. (coughs) In the authority. Okay. I marked both B and I marked uh, uh, other. Okay. Court appointed intestate, no valid uh, will exists. Okay? When they recorded most of the people's uh, uh, Social Security or uh, Certificate of Live Birth registrations, okay, before they were converted into their uh, uh, Certificate of Birth or Birth Certificate, They were done by uh, the court to be processed, uh, to be authenticated, and to be processed. And then sent up to the state and everything, okay? So basically they had to come in through the courthouse to go then up to the state and then to uh, get the the national uh, assignment. Patrick? Yeah. In section, section 8, that authority that you said on the 56, a, A1F, the a check other, what was the wording you had? Okay, basically that's up to you. Okay, other. Describe other in there. But I marked B and F. Yes. Okay, so then I put the date of the death because that goes with 1B. Right. Okay, and then in block 2B, I put the date that our uh, fiduciary, our individual banker, came into power. Right. Okay. And that's the uh, assignment of the fiduciary. And uh, basically, uh, in other, I would, uh, and I didn't put it on there, I've, uh, but that's when we come in and stand uh that we have assigned our private bank. We set up our private bank as the fiduciary over our assets. So in other, you can write something along that lines in there that you've taken control and put this stuff into the private system. And 
as a non-usury, non-taxable uh, uh, whatever, okay, non-profit. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're creating a non-profit organization, okay? And then basically down in uh, item three there, I said more domain corporate usury income tax debt set off with credits due. Mm -hmm. That's really what uh, we're coming in. We're not coming in for income, gift, to state, or any of that other stuff. It's a more domain corporate usury income tax debt set off. And then the forms we need to use is other. Just the 1099A and the 1096s. As far as I can see, we really don't need to do the 1040s or 1041s or any of those others. The W-8-B-E-N, okay, and some of these other taxes, you can modify them and get rid of that damn under penalty of perjury bullshit. Read the tax instructions booklets. It gives you the authorization to modify the tax forms. Companies have been doing that for years making up their own tax forms and then submitting them in. Especially for the W-8s and the uh, W-2s and W-4s and different things like that. <laughs> what is the W-8-B-E-N for? Non-resident exemption, basically. Okay. And you're a non-resident, okay? There's three terms that people use a hell of a lot out here, and they don't realize what they mean. Okay? One is an inhabitant. Okay? That means you are an office holder in the corporation or government or whatever. The second one is a resident <laughs> residing within, and basically that means you are an employee of that corporation or government. So you're a non-resident. You are not part of the government. The government does, you're not an employee of the government or of the tractor supply company or uh, Goodwill or whatever, okay? Mm-hmm. You as the living are not, okay? You're on the land. You're a nomad, really. You are a domicile, not a domestic, but a domicile. You're living here today. You may be gone tomorrow. But you're domiciled on this land or this address today. You can get pack up and move down the road. You're mobile. You're not a fixture. Does anybody else have any problem with that, with my understanding of these words? No. Anybody have any problem with my understanding's period?
Uh, can, I, can I go over again, just once again, you, you said on the 1099A for bill set off and the federal ID for the uh, lender is his lender's ID. The number on the left, the number on the right is ours. For the Thank bill you. set off, it is the EIN for uh, the company that we uh, that our, our account is in. You're borrowing from your person, okay, on the 1099A. Oh, right, right. Okay? I'm the account on. number down below is the account that is for that, like, uh, your water company, okay? Right. That, that's your person problem. is the name that's on the account, on the bill. Okay, right. I, I'm mistaken. We're not in the lender. So we're it's all, your social security number in the in the bill, you're borrowing by way of that, I think is the way I had it, on my uh, 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 hospital bill there. Right. Okay. They have our Social Security number on file because they had to get it because they had to be able to go back to our motor main account when we gave them a signature. We gave them a letter of credit. So from the letter of credit, we are now releasing that much credit that they don't have to pay back. Right. No, I mistook what you said before. If, yes, we're borrowing from our account that the lender has, not from his, his account with his own. <coughs> from their account in our name. Right. Their it's their our account, account, okay? It's not our account. It's their account. Right. Got it. And that's our Social Security number. Right. Uh, and it initially it would be under the Social Security. I mean, basically, yes. how do they get the funds? they got to go to the Mortimane account, which yeah. is down in Puerto Rico, and that's under your dead man's account, which is the Social Security number. Yeah, and that's why I say Social Security, a United States slash Social Security offshore independent treasury because it's holding more to main accounts and they can't be on cost on the United States. That's why they could not make Puerto Rico a state because they needed this territory to be separate and not under the jurisdiction of the Constitution, Constitution. and the statutes. Puerto Rico is operating under the code. Oh. No, it's not operating under the Constitution. If they would have made it a state, it would have been operating under the Constitution. Then that treasury down there would have had to disappear. Because it's in violation of the Constitution and the statutes of this country. Um, I think the suit on the calendar was a building company. Anybody have any problem with that understanding? No. Hmm. I guess you guys have no problem, so I'm done. The third you guys party go ahead and talk. Left. I'm finished for tonight. Okay. Take care. Patrick? Yes. One quick question for you. I was yeah? reading over the SS4 form that you filled out for the banker's EIN number. We use our socials on that, correct, and not the estate EIN, where it says Social Security number or taxpayer ID number. Yes, or when, you, EIN. when it asks for your Social Security number, you've got to attach that EIN. They're getting to that Social Security number. You're going to come in as a fiduciary okay. down the road. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was clear that I put the social there. Yeah, you've got to show attachment in the process. Okay. 
That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I just got on the call, Patrick. Is is what happened? Is uh, I mean, speak I up. What happened? I mean, I mean, well, like what happened? But did you post some new files or anything? Because um, I mean, I'm just curious because I, I don't know what everybody else do, and 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 I'm late. I just got on the call like three minutes ago. Okay, I sent Tom out uh, to uh, the other day a form 56F and a form 56. Okay to uh, sort of update those uh, in the process for our more main accounts, okay? And I put down, like, uh, on the address, non-resident, okay, for the for our estate EIN person. He's a non-resident. And then our private bank is a non-resident, okay? The only real resident... Is basically that Morna Main account down in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I won't be able to get to look at those till tomorrow morning. So I'll probably yeah. uh, And that's why behind on uh, the form 56, behind the address, I put in parentheses true residential address US slash SS independent parentheses offshore. Mortemain, close parentheses, Treasury, Puerto Rico. And then the identification number I took out uh, for his account, I took out the dashes, the Social Security without the dashes. And then the uh, decedent's Social Security number, has the dashes in it. He's a dead man. He's a Mortemain account. <laughs> you start standing up to these courts and everything else in this process, and they will run like hell. Because now you understand, and you can get this thing processed through, now you understand the taxing purposes. And even though they may not know it all, okay, when you start speaking with authority, they know something's wrong, and they'll back off. You don't be belligerent about it, but you speak with authority. And then you use the terms like Baby Act, Confession and Avoidance, Mortemain Account that they're utilizing, letters of credit by your signature, and you come in as an individual banker, and you're operating per the laws of the Roman Empire, even though they may not know that, but you operate by the law. And Christ is the law cast in iron. Let them prove you wrong that basically that is not the real law. You don't operate under the Jezebel law system because you're a non-resident. Only a residential employee and an inhabitant have to operate by those codes of law that are out there. The Jezebel law system. Anybody else? So no 10, 1040Cs? We're not doing the 1040Cs? No. No, we should be able to handle everything with the 1099As, okay? 
And then uh, if we're doing receipts, we uh, put a 1099-B in when we go to Puerto Rico with that and uh, send those down to Puerto Rico. Otherwise, you're doing an endorsement on a bill and doing a 1099-A, a cover letter, and turning it around and sending it back to the bill presenter. Just like the template I had there for the set-offs. Do that and then send stuff out by certified mail. You're now coming in as a banker. One banker to another banker. Now, if they do not comply within three days, they're in violation of the banking laws. Banking settlement. That's what you needed to have. Your authority as a banker. You are now banked. You don't know how powerful that is. Who always wins in the court? The banks. But we were never standing in as the banks. That's why we kept losing. Because we didn't bring our superior bank into that court. They were operating with their Jezebel Bank, but our de jour Temple Bank, our Temple Bank, never showed up. So you lost. Your Temple Bank is basically the one that's the fiduciary over these processes to be able to have the authority to order the set-off. It's that simple. Anybody alive out there? <laughs> Damn it. I hate this shit from you guys. I, I, I got to ask a question, Patrick. I, I sent something to Tom and Steve last week uh, concerning the legal name. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or not. And I don't want to talk about it on the call because I'm not really clear about it myself right now because I haven't had the time to look over it. But, um... Uh, and it referred to uh, um, the the about Pope Francis and and everything that you spoke of uh, previously. Uh, and it talked. About, it also uh, spoke about getting rid of, you know, not e- not even using the name at all because they're in control of it. So I don't know. I'm, I mean, you know what? I'm just sorry that I even brought it up. Um, I just no, no, that's a good thing. To bring something like that up. Because there, that's misinfor- some of that's misinformation about, uh, but yeah, you as the living only have a first name, okay? But to operate in the system out here, you have to have your family behind you, okay? Okay. You've got to show where you came from. What gave you your authority to be here? You just didn't all of a sudden appear on the scene without any uh, lineage in the process. But you operate with the process that you use that name, and you use that name properly. And a lot of the deception out here, and there's gurus out here that have been operating and deceiving the people completely away from the real truth. Claiming that they were insiders, and basically they knew all the stuff, and basically had the people following them. Well, I knew all this, and basically I'm an insider. 
but I can't tell you one damn thing of how to set a damn bell off properly. But yet people will follow them to the hilt. I mean, from what I've been putting out here in the last several months, there ought to be thousands of people on this call. You'd think you guys would start getting the word out to a bunch of these people and that the people would start waking up and start wanting this stuff that basically they want to watch the damn football games and all this other goddamn bullshit. <laughs> Just like what went on in the Roman system there in the Colosseums. Right. Keep the people preoccupied. Distractions. Yeah. And they'll never get shit done. They'll never find out the truth. Hell, I'm trying to give you free money. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, Pat, let me tell you about this third, this third-party collect, debt collector letter that you have on the file. Yeah. I sent that, I sent that letter through CFPB, Consumer uh, Financial Protection. They, they responded back with a cease and desist from that account. They, told, they said that they would not be contacting me no more and that that account has been closed and the cease and desist has been put on that account. So I thank you for that third-party debt collector letter. It's powerful. Yeah, and basically, see, they have no uh, contract with you, okay? Right. Right. They have a contract with the damn uh, uh, bank or whoever, okay? Uh On my hospital bill there, okay? I did that, and I haven't heard one thing from that hospital or one thing from that uh, third-party debt collector. It's been well over two weeks. Haven't got anything back from them like what you got, but they should know damn well they better not come after me because mm-hmm. I will charge them with slander and harm because mm-hmm. I gave them payment. I released the credit, mm-hmm. and I don't have a contract with that third party. Exactly. See, even the county court, okay, is a third-party debt collector. Mm. Who are they trying to collect the debt for? The Department of Transportation. Mm, right, right. All the traffic tickets and everything else are basically a violation of the Department of Transportation codes. So the court is acting like a third-party debt collector. Damn sure it. And they don't have jurisdiction over the living. The state courts read the constitutions. They don't have jurisdiction over the living, the state courts. They only have jurisdictions over the dead accounts. <clears throat> That's why you see all the big name accounts or big name court cases coming out of the uh, the federal courts or the Supreme Court, the Article Threes, that really amount to shit.
How much time we got? Before all this shit goes. You got five seconds. I don't know how much time we got. <clears throat> Basically, the whole thing is getting ready to collapse here one of these days. We're working on it. Okay, anybody else got any questions, comments, whatever? No, sir. Well, I'm, I'm, I've sent mine in. I'm working on some more, and I have been talking to some people about this. I think there are a couple of people on the call tonight, but they need to catch up. thing is, too, people have been so twisted uh, from all the information that's out here. People kind of like waiting back and trying to wait and see what happens to somebody who goes out there and does it to see what the result is. And I understand that, but I'm at the point where I I don't give a damn. I'm just going for it, man. I'm just going for it. it I I try to give you examples of people. Uh, Lawrence and Bill, okay? Lawrence Mm -hmm. has gone down there and set off his water bill. He also set off his uh, auto loan for his boy, okay? Uh, other people have gone out there and done set offs. I went in and basically bought a car. I got the manufacturer's title. I stood my ground. Ooh. I revoked the damn uh, uh, warranty on the vehicle, seven year warranty, so Ford Motor Company has no jurisdiction over that car. The state of Iowa has no jurisdiction over the car because I never signed it over to them. They can't write a traffic ticket against that car because they have no jurisdiction over the car. (laughs) It's like running around in an Amish buggy. The state don't have jurisdiction over that horse and buggy. Well, this is my horse and buggy. A few more horses, though. So they, um, they can't tow it either, right? They cannot. They tow it, and they will be charged, okay? They tow it. And then on the back of my vehicle, I above the top, Okay, I just went in and I got Saturday, I got uh, from that carstickers.com site, I got uh, five more little fishes and uh, five more little crosses and uh, five or six Bibles with a cross on it. Well, license, can you read it all? Huh? Hey, Patrick, got a question for you. No. Basically, I put, well, I'm going to tell you, finish off about my car. On the top, okay, now I have uh, not for hire, okay? I want to put uh, stickies on there. I don't know how long they'll last. I can always replace them. But not for hire. See, we're not for hire by them. That car is not for hire. Only when it is for hire up is it operating in the commercial industry. Okay? Then down below my license plate, now my license plate is basically a private uh, uh, post, uh, whatever, I forget what the hell I said on there. But it's the one I did about uh, two years ago. And I had, okay, with the registration number and everything else, a uh, registered mail number. So it's now registered in the private. It's a private mail property. Okay, and then 
uh, the logo license plate I put ambassador, foreign ambassador, in, for, and of Christ the law. <clears throat> in, for, and of. Foreign grant or trust is the in. For is basically my estate, EIN person. And of is my uh, individual banker, EIN person. My three persons in Christ, in the law. Now let them chew on that. I haven't got any damn cop to try and stop me yet. The amount of cops that are out there is very few and far between, really, when it comes down to it. Are you going to turn your receipt in for the car? Yes. Good. You didn't know my Morta Main debit card person paid for the car, I'm going back there and get some more funds and charge my Morta Main debit card, my direct express card, back up. I'm going to move assets out of my Morta Main account down there in Puerto Rico over into my uh, debit card, my direct express card. And see, that's the treasury direct card for the people that don't have, that aren't up there to Social Security retirement. That card is really for your Morta Main account. You got a bank account, a treasury bank account. You need to have a debit card attached to that treasury account. You just have to process and move the funds from the account into the card. There's a Treasury Inspector General out in Washington, D.C. Who is the Treasury Inspector General for the Morta Main account? Harold, down in Texas, and I both contacted the thing, the guys, and basically we got resolved. When we went to the Mortimer Treasury Inspector General. Wow. That individual should be down in Puerto Rico, right, Patrick? I don't know where he's located, but basically he is the Social Security Inspector General. Gotcha, okay. Now, the Social Security is the accessing conduit to our Treasury SS Mortimane offshore account. That's what the Social Security system is all about. Hey, Patrick? Yeah. Some years ago, my mom saw a uh, an old Datsun pickup in a Walmart parking lot here in Oregon, uh-huh. and the license plate on it wasn't a regular license plate. It said Sovereign, and then it had a number underneath that, and then it said um, Private Use Automobile, number on file with Alaska Secretary of State. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, you can do that, or basically put it in the post office. I like your idea better because I don't have to go to the Secretary of State and possibly have the Secretary of State saying, oh, well, I don't understand what this is, and kick it back to me. Yeah, and see, when you use the post office, who's in charge of the post office? Postmaster General. Well, well, who's the Postmaster General work for? Works for me. He works for the Empire. Mm. Oh. He's a post in the Empire. Got it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, study Roman history. They see they set up the post office system. But they used it in uh, all the different empires had basically a local post office that they went and sent their couriers out to. So the post office has been out here in the empires for eons. So now as a Roman, okay, citizen, you utilize the post office. That's why I used the registered mail number on my license plate. And now put it under the empire's control. So you use a registered mail number instead of a certified mail number? On my license plate, I used a registered mail number. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, see, about two or three years ago, whenever I did this, uh, and then I sent it down to Texas to get this license plate I made up. Uh, it's in the files there somewhere. Uh, I think even showing uh, the one that I did, picture of one. Okay. Of course, I, it, my, they took my license plates off the vehicle uh, when they arrested my pickup but uh, about two years ago, but that's because the pickup was still under the state registration. Okay? So the state still had a claim against that vehicle, against that pickup. Now I've got the salvage title to the vehicle, to the pickup, and all I've got on the license plate on it now is executor, or not executor, elector. Of course, I don't do too much driving around. Of course, I did go down about uh, 35 miles away and pick up my stove and uh, uh, wood splitter the other day. But I hit my times and basically hit the roads and uh, uh, get in and get out. I don't afford them very much opportunity to try and get me. <laughs> I mean, why do I want the hassles from those shitheads? Exactly. Of course, with my car, I drove it up there to the VA hospital, parked in the VA parking lot the other day, up in Iowa City. But I only saw one cop at the time, and he already had somebody pulled over, so basically I knew I was home free on that one. And then it's on a little white vehicle that basically doesn't stand out, sort of blends in with everybody else. Sort of hide within their system. You don't have to be obvious in the process, even though the back of my vehicle is pretty damn obvious. But I haven't gotten anybody to come up behind me and honk at me and 
try and ask me what the hell you've got there. Because people can't fucking think. The revoking of the warranty, uh, what was that about? Did you just tell me you don't want no warranty on the vehicle? Great. Okay. Ford Motor Company, if you have a seven-year warranty for parts and labor, what do they got? They got a lien on that vehicle. Mm. Okay? So now you're under their... You've given it to them, just like the state, with that certificate title. You gave them a leaning instrument, a claim against that vehicle. Gotcha. Yeah, so when you get rid of that, then nobody else has any claim. Now it's outright private property. I mean, when you buy it new from the dealer, they're going to try to, you know, offer it. So what? how do you revoke it? Will you just tell them you don't want it? That's what I'm asking. Yep. Yeah, basically, okay. I signed a letter, oh, okay. a statement, gotcha. and gotcha. told them, since they work for Ford Motor Company, to get that back to them because – Basically, the MSO title is was in uh, the Ford Motor Company Credit Department. Mm-hmm. That's who had the MSO. It wasn't the local car dealership having the MSO. They had the MSO, but basically the authority over that MSO was with the credit Ford Motor Company Credit. Department. Patrick, what is MSO? What is that acronym? What's that for? Manufacturer's title of origin, and basically it's just your or uh, the or origin. Oh, what the hell is it? Certificate of a origin of a vehicle, okay? Gotcha. That's what it says on the top of it. Certificate of origin of a vehicle. And then basically down below, it had finance source, okay? Mm-hmm. And then Ford Motor Company Credit Company. Ford Motor Credit Company. Dearborn, Michigan. Wow. Uh, leave off from you. And see, then I bought it in my private bank, Patrick Devine Private Bank is the buyer of that vehicle. And then I signed as the individual banker, Patrick Devine. I, as Patrick, am not anywhere on that document. I used my one of my three persons. Gotcha. My head, shithead guy. My banker. Mm-hmm. But he's my banker. He's not the state's banker or any or the federal government's banker. He's my banker. And what he's is- in the private. And now my banker can stand up to any of these commercial bankers and kick the living shit out of them. Patrick? Because, go ahead. Your, your license plate example is in the private mail folder. It's number six on the backup. And it's uh, on just about a year ago, October 25th, 2014. The name is Private Mail License Plate Example. Mm. <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, and that was uh, from, uh, I forget who, uh, Buildersign.com or something. I think I, I get emails from those guys all the time. Okay. That made that up. Uh, but uh, do you have that PDP PDP number in the middle of it? Yep. 
And see, mine's only about two letters in height. So that will bring some attention because most uh, numbers on the license plate are three inches in diameter. Right. Actually, you just look smaller than that. It's probably an inch. Mine's about an inch smaller. Right. You have PE-PMP-001 in the, the body of the license plate. Yeah. The first P stood for Patrick, dash, private, male, property, dash, 001, PMP, private, male, property. That's what the letters were standing for. Mm. And then when you start understanding that you operate in the real law, Christ has risen, okay? You have to help him rise, okay? And that is the real law, to bring back the real law. You have to have faith and belief in the real law. That's what the man was talking about in trying to show us the way and the path out here. And even if you're, for you women, if you read the book of Ruth, you stand by the law. Stand by your man. And that's what Ruth was doing, was standing by her man. I don't know. I think Loretta Lynn or something basically did that. Yep. Mm. Also. Good song. People don't understand it, but good song. Lyrics are good. (laughs) Now, Patrick, about the debit cards. Now, when you go go to the bank, right, and you get it and you pull out cash for that from the yeah. bank institution, and it gives you that little slip. That's not a receipt. You're talking about sales receipts are the only receipts that we send down to to, to Puerto Rico. You can send the other receipts down there too. Really? Even though I've already got money from that uh, that receipt. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 pulling that out of your account. Now you want to reimburse, take more funds out of your account. And put them into your debit card. God damn. Okay. Ain't no more. You gotta recharge your card. So you gotta show something that basically you went out here and you processed the thing through. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That could be because you. It's a rebalm. Okay. I got you. But don't use anybody else's. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. Okay. So when you go through dipsy dumpster diving, <laughs> okay, to get the receipt, only use the ones that basically paid with cash. Right. Okay. Okay. Damn, that could be a and that's like a that's like a part time job, man. Yeah. People don't know that they've been throwing access to more funds away every day with these receipts and everything. (laughs) 
It's your recharging instrument to recharge up the amount that you can utilize. Got it. Claim your debts that basically the rents that are due. It's like you're a farmer and basically you rent the farm out and you haven't been coming in to the renter and collecting the debts. The rents. Nice. Patrick, so what do I do if I had a I had my second account with, with this bank for like 50 years? <laughs> you know, I've been a loyal customer for 50 years. What can I do in regards to that, getting all that money back? Well, get in there and try and get that uh, uh, Treasury Direct card and then get this uh, going down to Puerto Rico and having the funds transferred to that Treasury Direct card and start utilizing that card and close down this commercial usury uh, bank account. What do you need this commercial bank for? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just ask my bank to give me a... a yeah. card. They pissed me off here at my mom's bank, and basically they're one of the banks that won't do business with me or basically told me not to even come into the damn place. <laughs> but I went in there and basically had three uh, items there to uh, put in and try and get cash back for my mom. Well, she wasn't there, so basically they weren't going to give me the cash back, but they could deposit it. But then since I wasn't on her account, they wouldn't even give me the damn balance of the account. Damn. I said, my mom's at home. She's basically uh, in pain and everything. That's why she's not here. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm putting this in her account. Basically, I'm going to take it back and give it to her. But these cock-sucking banks, usury, Jezebel shitting things, with all their damn fraudulent codes of law, want to try and control you. So get rid of them. Destroy them. Them and the insurance company and all these damn government bullshit organizations out here that aren't worth this shit. Mm-hmm. Is there something in the file that gives us the application for the Treasury Direct Card? It should be on the site there. I know because several people have gone there and tried here recently to go get that card. Okay. So talk talk it over on the site there. Oh. I got one but I never utilized it. Now I have a direct express card which is which is uh a more powerful one I think, but it's probably got the same power when you really look at it. One is just below the retirement age, the other one's over the retirement age. Mm. But as far as I can see, they're still basically being operated through the Social Security Administration. And like I said, that damn uh, U.S. uh, slash S.S. independent offshore treasury, mortar main treasury, the Inspector General is the Inspector General for the Social Security Administration. People never fully understood what that Social Security Administration was all about. It was about setting up the offshore banking system. That mortar main account is your real Social Security account. You just got to make sure you get funds put into that account by means of giving the receipts so that the Treasury can go after the companies that owe the rents 
the usury rent back to the Treasury. Congress can't do this for you. All these other people that are trying to run around here and basically do all this stuff, for you, they can't do it. This is all on an individual basis. That's why it's called out individual banker. You as an individual have powers. Start utilizing them. Okay, I'm done ranting and raving. One final option for questions, if you've got any. Otherwise, I'm going to drop off here. My DD-214 is in that account, too, right? That's the same thing, the more man. Huh? My DD-214 account, I mean, uh, DD-214 is part of the Social Security account, so that's the same as the Mort Main? Yes, it's under the Mort Main account down in Puerto Rico. Beautiful. Because the, social, or the DD-214s were all transferred, so the military bounty assets are located down there, and then the Department of Defense has been the renter of those items out here, the VF Veterans Administration and uh, the Department of Defense. Yeah, and you could take that DD-214 and basically endorse to uh, your, uh, uh, either Treasury Direct or uh, Direct Expert. Damn, you went out, Pat. Um, you you went out. That, can you say that again? Basically, you can endorse... Take a copy, a certified copy of your DD-214, okay, and you should have those on deposit at the uh, county courthouse, and then get certified copies of that from the courthouse, and see, that is covered by Title 46, Chapter 73. The Siemens uh, coupon. Yeah, the Merchant Seaman coupon. And you just have that much? You put the voucher in? uh, Or not the voucher. You do the endorsement on the back Mm -hmm. of your DD-214 to transfer the funds over to your uh, Direct Express or Treasury Direct card the Social Security more domain card. And then uh, you can utilize it. Damn. Awesome. That's awesome. Shit. And then when you start seeing about all this stuff about taxes, we owe no taxes. Right. Only the dead owes taxes. So you turn around and you take your tax bill and you endorse it and you release that much credit back to them. It's not out of your back pocket. Take it out of your Mortimane account. Hmm. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Got a bit of a problem with that because my concern is if I endorse they, their check or their money or their funds that came from U3, then I get a sense that I've acknowledged and accepted their future. You're breaking so, up quite a bit. Um, yeah, I'll type it in the uh, Skype window. Maybe Tom can. Okay. The 
the, I mean, people think they understand the banking process of using debit cards and everything else in a checking account and a savings account. Hell, this system is the same damn way. Only it's a lot simpler. Mm-hmm. And then you got the Treasury Inspector General, the Independent Treasury Inspector General, which is that Social Security Inspector General. Mm-hmm. Now, when I complained to him, basically my funds were put into that Direct Express card right now. Damn. That's $73,000 that they owed me. The first time they screwed up one of the numbers, they were one number off in there, somehow or other. When the local Social Security office gave them the number, the other person on the other side recorded it wrong. So it took an extra uh, three or four days to get processed in. But boy, when I told him this is unacceptable and basically that I was going to the Social Security Inspector General, that shit got done. (laughs) Harold, basically when he complained to him, they were taking out taxes out of his Social Security. Damn. It stopped and basically they put the taxes back that they'd taken out. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so can I ask him to uh, to enlarge my uh, disability check? You no. put a draw into Puerto Rico for additional funds. Mm. Nice. You do an invoice, a 1099A, and an invoice to do a draw and have it put into wherever you've got the payment going to. Okay. 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 I'm going to call tonight. We'll talk to you guys later. All right. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Good. Thank you.